to F. W. F. by James Clark Maxwell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. To F. W. F. Sixth of April, eighteen fifty-three. Farrer, when our Goodwin's page late, I found thee pouring from the hydrostatic sage leaky memory storing or when groaning yesterday needlessly distracted by some bright erratic ray through a sphere refracted then the quick words oft suppressed in my forces fluttered thoughts not yet in language dressed pleasing to be uttered he that neatly gilds the pill hides the drug but vainly so in chance sown words i will speak the matter plainly men there are whose patient minds in one object centred wait till through their darkened blinds truth has burst and entered then that ray so barely caught joyfully absorbing they behold the realms of thought into science orbing thus they wait and thus they toil thus they end in knowing like good seed in kindly soil taking root and growing men there are whose ambient souls in rapt intuition seize creation as it rolls whole without partition not for them the darkened room lends and perforation enemies are they to gloom foes to insulation there's the light of perfect day there's the sense of freedom dungeons and the tortured ray serve for those that need em song to them of right belongs eloquently flowing sweeping down time-honoured wrongs surging burning glowing songs in which all hearts rejoice songs of ancient story songs that fill a people's voice marching on to glory thus they live and thus they love thus they soar in singing like glad larks in heaven above dazzling courses winging here i prithee turn thy mind to a little fable of the fledged and rooted kind bird and vegetable pensive in his lowly nest once a lark was lying often did he heave his breast querulously sighing for he saw with envious eyes pampered vegetation cabbages of goodly size swoln with emulation till their self-enfolded green tight crammed wide distended seemed in spherid pomp to mean all that it pretended long he sought to win their place in the gardener's favour well he caught the silent grace of a plant's behaviour all was useless he confessed earth for him unsuited terror seized upon him lest he should there be rooted cabbages are cabbages larks are larks he muttered then light springing in the breeze through the sky he fluttered farrer mark my fable well fling away ambition by that sin the angels fell into black perdition cut the calculus and stop paths that lead to error think below the junior op gapes the gulf's grim terror then your mathematic wings plucked from off your shoulder will express what horace sings of that rash youth bolder than his waxen wings allowed or his cautious father fall not thou from out thy cloud algebraic rather try the pole for none but fools fools i mean at college reach the earth between two stools tripuses of knowledge better in poetic rage sing through heaven soaring than disfigure goodwin's page by incessant pouring
footnote the occasion of this and of the following poem is fully explained in a note from the rev canon farrer which is here subjoined to professor campbell thirtieth of march eighteen eighty two my dear sir i am sorry that the playful nonsense of my undergraduate days should be printed but if the lines will in the slightest degree help to illustrate the extreme goodness and kind-heartedness of maxwell i am content the circumstances were these i went up to cambridge very ill prepared in mathematics and my classical work was much hindered by the considerable amount of mathematics required for a senior optime at which i aimed in despair i used to say to maxwell sometimes that i should be plucked in mathematics which in those days would have prevented my taking classical honours he in his ready sympathy and the kind interest which he showed towards me took my words d'un trop grand sérieux and wrote me the poetic apologue in which he advised me to aim at poetry like a lark while i left mathematicians to the distinction of being what carlyle calls the quickest and completest of vegetables the point of his advice was that i should give up the effort to win honour in the mathematical tripos and should be content with the pole or ordinary mathematical degree reserving my strength for the classical tripos i sent him my reply the same day and i remember he pressed me to let him read it at one of our social meetings which i absolutely refused to allow him to do without this word of explanation the verses would seem too nonsensical yours very truly f w farrer End of footnote. reply to the above by f w f te quoque vatem dicunt pastores virgil o oh, maxwell if by reason strength and studying of babbage you have transformed yourself at length into a mental cabbage and if i've proved myself a lark at morn and blushing even by soaring like a music spark through sapphire fields of heaven our diverse fates are now reversed by strange metempsychosis into a cabbage i have burst and scorn poetic posies but you a lark with twinkling wings or violet banks are soaring your voice the dewy rose-cloud rings while statics me are boring yet cabbage as i will on earth my roots i cannot anchor for at my mathematic birth was also born a canker it soon will gnaw my roots away but when i wear kenix i'll freely soar to realms of day an emerald cabbage phoenix then talk not of the pole to me i hate detest and scorn it i am as earnest as a bee but savage as a hornet and if they pluck me i will drown each pedant in a sonnet and of their pluckings make a crown with golden plumes upon it so if my cabbage growth be slow i'll try to be a carrot or still remain a lark but no i'll not be pole or parrot then if i fall beneath the mark i'll shout with accent savage it is a lark to be a lark tis green to be a cabbage end of to f w f by james clark maxwell lines written under the conviction that it is not wise to read mathematics in november after one's fire is out by james clark maxwell this librivox recording is in the public domain in the sad november time when the leaf has left the lime and the cam with sludge and slime plasters his ugly channel while with sober step and slow round about the marshes low stiffening students stumping go shivering through their flannel then to me in doleful mood rises up a question rude asking what sufficient good comes of this mode of living moping on from day to day grinding up what will not pay 
till the jaded brain gives way under its own misgiving why should wretched man employ years which nature meant for joy striving vainly to destroy freedom of thought and feeling still the injured powers remain endless stores of hopeless pain when at last the vanquished brain languishes past all healing where is then his wealth of mind all the schemes that hope designed gone like spring to leave behind indolent melancholy thus he ends his helpless days vexed with thoughts of former praise tell me how are wisdom's ways better than senseless folly happier those whom trifles please dreaming out a life of ease sinking by unfelt degrees into annihilation or the slave to labour born heedless of the freeman's scorn destined to be slowly worn down to the brute creation thus a tempting spirit spoke as from troubled sleep i woke to a morning thick with smoke sunless and damp and chilly then to sleep i turned once more eyes inflamed and windpipe sore dreaming dreams i dreamt before only not quite so silly in my dream methought i strayed where a learned-looking maid stores of flimsy goods displayed articles not worth wearing these she said with solemn air are the robes that sages wear warranted when kept with care never to need repairing then unnumbered witlings caught by her wiles the trappings bought and by labour not by thought honour and fame were earning while the men of wiser mind passed for blind among the blind pedants left them far behind in the career of learning those that fix their eager eyes ever on the nearest prize well may venture to despise loftier aspirations pedantry is in demand buy it up at second hand seek no more to understand profitless speculations thus the gaudy gowns were sold cast off sloughs of pedants old proudly marched the students bold through the domain of error till their trappings false though fair mouldered off and left them bare clustering close in blank despair nakedness cold and terror then i said these haughty schools boast that by their formal rules they produce more learned fools than could be well expected learned fools they are indeed learned in the books they read fools whene'er they come to need wisdom too long neglected oh that men indeed were wise and would raise their purblind eyes to the opening mysteries scattered around them ever truth should spring from sterile ground beauty beam from all around right should then at last be found joining what none may sever End of lines written under the conviction that it is not wise to read mathematics in November after one's fire is out by James Clark Maxwell. A Problem in Dynamics by James Clark Maxwell. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 19th of February, 1854 an inextensible heavy chain lies on a smooth horizontal plane an impulsive force is applied at a required the initial motion of k let ds be the infinitesimal link of which for the present we've only to think let t be the tension and t plus dt the same for the end that is nearest to b let a be put by a common convention for the angle at m twixt o x and the tension let v sub t and v sub n be ds's velocities 
of which v sub t along and v sub n across it is then v sub n over v sub t the tangent will equal of the angle of starting worked out in the sequel in working the problem the first thing of course is to equate the impressed and effectual forces k is tugged by two tensions whose difference dt must equal the element's mass into v sub t one v sub n must be due to the force perpendicular to ds's direction which shows the particular advantage of using dA to serve at your pleasure to estimate ds's curvature for v sub n into mass of a unit of chain must equal the curvature into the strain two thus managing cause and effect to discriminate the student must fruitlessly try to eliminate and painfully learn that in order to do it he must find the equation of continuity the reason is this that the tough little element which the force of impulsion to beat to a jelly meant was endowed with a property incomprehensible and was given in the language of shop inextensible it therefore with such pertinacity odd defied the force which the length of the chain would have modified that its stubborn example may possibly yet recall these overgrown rhymes to their prosody metrical the condition is got by resolving again according to axes assumed in the plane three if then you reduce to the tangent and normal you will find the equation more neat though less formal four the condition thus found after these preparations when duly combined with the former equations will give you another in which differentials five when the chain forms a circle become in essentials no harder than those that we easily solve in the time a teetotum would take to revolve six now joyfully leaving ds to itself uh, tend to the values of t and of a the chain undergoes a distorting convulsion produced first at a by the force of impulsion in magnitude r in direction tangential seven equating this r to the form exponential obtained for the tension when a is zero it will measure the tug such a tug as the hero plume waving experienced tied to the chariot but when dragged by the heels his grim head could not carry aught eight so give a its due at the end of the chain and the tension ought there to be zero again from these two conditions we get three equations which serve to determine the proper relations between the first impulse and each coefficient in the form for the tension and this is sufficient to work out the problem and then if you choose you may turn it and twist it the dons to amuse equations referred to one dt equals m times v sub t ds two m times v sub n equals t times da over ds three d v sub t over ds equals v sub n times da over ds four second derivative with respect to t of s minus t times open parenthesis d a over d s closed parenthesis squared equals zero five second derivative with respect to t of a minus t equals zero six t equals c sub one times e to the power of a plus c sub two times e to the power of minus a seven r equals c sub one plus c sub two eight zero equals c sub one times e to the power of a sub one plus c sub two times e to the power of minus a sub one v sub n over v sub t equals tangent beta equals minus the fraction 
the numerator is e to the power of the difference of a sub one minus a minus e to the power of minus the difference of a sub one minus a and the denominator is e to the power of the difference of a sub one minus a plus e to the power of minus the difference of a sub one minus a end of a problem in dynamics by james clark maxwell In memory of Edward Wilson, who repented of what was in his mind to write after section. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Rigid Body Gin a body, meet a body, flying through the air. Gin a body, hit a body, will it fly and where? Ilk impact has its measure ne'er ain he i yet are the lads they measure me or at least they try gin a body meet a body all together free how they travel afterwards we do not always see ilk a problem has its method by analytics high for me i ken na ain o them but what the war am i end of in memory of edward wilson rigid body by james clark maxwell valentine by a telegraph clerk male to a telegraph clerk female by james clark maxwell this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The tendrils of my soul are twined with thine, though many a mile apart, and thine in close coiled circuits wind around the needle of my heart. Constant as Daniel, strong as Grove, ebullient through its depths like Smee my heart pours forth its tide of love and all its circuits close in thee oh tell me when along the line from my full heart the message flows what currents are induced in thine one click from thee will end my woes through many an ohm the vapour flew and clicked this answer back to me I am thy farad, staunch and true, charged to a vault with love for thee. End of Valentine by a Telegraph Clerk Male to a Telegraph Clerk Female by James Clerk Maxwell Lectures to Women on Physical Science by James Clerk Maxwell this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 1. Place a small alcove with dark curtains. The class consists of one member. Subject, Thomson's Mirror Galvanometer. The lamplight falls on blackened walls and streams through narrow perforations. The long beam trails o'er pasteboard scales with slow decaying oscillations flow current flow set the quick light spot flying flow current answer light spot flashing quivering dying oh look how queer how thin and clear and thinner clearer sharper growing the gliding fire with central wire the fine degrees distinctly showing swing magnet swing advancing and receding swing magnet answer dearest what's your final reading oh love you fail to read the scale correct a tenths of a division to mirror heaven those eyes were given and not for methods of precision break contact break set the free light spot flying break contact rest the magnet swinging creeping dying 
July 1874, to Professor Krishchanovich, Ph.D., on the CGS system of units. Remarks submitted to the lecturer by a student. Prim Doctor of Philosophy from Academic Heidelberg, your sum of vital energy is not the millionth of an erg. Your liveliest motion might be reckoned at one-tenth metre in a second. The air, you said, in language fine, which scientific thought expresses, the air, which with a megadyne on each square centimetre presses, the air, and I may add the ocean, are naught but molecules in motion. Atoms, you told me, were discreet. Than you they could not be discreeter, who know how many millions meet within a cubic millimetre. They clash together as they fly, but you, you cannot tell me why. And when in tuning my guitar the interval would not come right, this string, you said, is strained too far, tis forty dines at least too tight. And then you told me, as I sang, what overtones were in my clang. You gabbled on, but every phrase was stiff with scientific shoddy. The only song you deigned to praise was Gin a Body, Meet a Body. And even there, you said, collision was not described with due precision. In the invariable plane, you told me, lay the impulsive couple. You seized my hand, you gave me pain by torsion of a wrist so supple. You told me what that wrench would do, t'would set me twisting round a screw. Were every hair of every tress, which you no doubt imagine mine, drawn towards you with its breaking stress, a stress, say, of a megadyne, that tension I would sooner suffer than meet again with such a duffer. Footnote CGS system, the system of units founded on the centimetre, gram and second. See Report of Committee on Units. British Association Report for 1873, page 222. Erg, the energy communicated by a dyne acting through a centimetre. Tenth metre equals one metre, times ten to the power of minus ten. Megadyne equals one dyne, times ten to the power of six. It is somewhat more than the weight of a kilogram. Dyne, the force which, acting on a gram for a second, would give a velocity of a centimetre per second. The weight of a gram is about 980 dynes. See Sound and Music by Sedley Taylor, page 89. See Poinceau, Théorie Nouvelle de la Rotation des Corps. See Professor Ball on the Theory of Screws. Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society, 1873. End of Lectures to Women on Physical Science by James Clerk Maxwell. To the Chief Musician upon Nabla, a Tyndallic Ode by James Clerk Maxwell. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. I come from fields of fractured ice, whose wounds are cured by squeezing. Melting they cool, but in a trice get warm again by freezing. Here in the frosty air the sprays with fern-like hoar-frost bristle. There liquid stars their watery rays shoot through the solid crystal. I come from empyrean fires, from microscopic spaces where molecules with fierce desires shiver in hot embraces the atoms clash the spectra flash projected on the screen the double d magnesian b and thallium's living green we place our eye where these dark rays unite in this dark focus right on the source of power we gaze without a screen to cloak us then where the eye was placed at first we place a disc of platinum it glows it puckers will it burst 
however shall we flatten him this crystal tube the electric ray shows optically clean no dust or haze within but stay all has not yet been seen what gleams are these of heavenly blue what air-drawn form appearing what mystic fish that ghost-like through the empty space is steering i light this sympathetic flame my faintest wish that answers i sing it sweetly sings the same it dances with the dancers i shout i whistle clap my hands and stamp upon the platform the flame responds to my commands in this form and in that form what means that thrilling drilling scream protect me tis the siren her heart is fire her breath is steam her larynx is of iron sun dart thy beams in tepid streams rise viewless exhalations and lap me round that no rude sound may mar my meditations here let me pause these transient facts these fugitive impressions must be transformed by mental acts to permanent possessions then summon up your grasp of mind your fancy scientific till sights and sounds with thought combined become of truth prolific go to prepare your mental bricks fetch them from every quarter firm on the sand your basement fix with best sensation mortar the top shall rise to heaven on high or such an elevation that the swift whirl with which we fly shall conquer gravitation footnote nabla was the name of an assyrian harp of the shape del del is a quaternion operator open parenthesis i of d over dx plus j of d over dy plus k of d over dz closed parenthesis invented by sir w r hamilton whose use and properties were first fully discussed by professor tait who is therefore called the chief musician upon nabla end of to the chief musician upon nabla by james clark maxwell To the Committee of the Cayley Portrait Fund by James Clark Maxwell. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. O oh, wretched race of men to space confined! What honour can ye pay to him whose mind to that which lies beyond hath penetrated? The symbols he hath formed shall sound his praise and lead him on through unimagined ways to conquests new in worlds not yet created first ye determinants in ordered row and massive column ranged before him go to form a phalanx for his safe protection ye powers of the nth roots of minus one around his head in ceaseless cycles run as unembodied spirits of direction and you ye undevelopable scrolls above the host wave your emblazoned rolls ruled for the record of his bright inventions ye cubic surfaces by threes and nines draw round his camp your seven and twenty lines the seal of solomon in three dimensions march on symbolic host with step sublime up to the flaming bounds of space and time there pause until by dickinson depicted in two dimensions we the form may trace of him whose soul too large for vulgar space in n dimensions flourished unrestricted end of to the committee of the cayley portrait fund eighteen seventy four by james clark maxwell molecular evolution 
Belfast, 1874, by James Clark Maxwell. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. At quite uncertain times and places, the atoms left their heavenly path, and by fortuitous embraces engendered all that being hath and though they seem to cling together and form associations here yet soon or late they burst their tether and through the depths of space career so we who sat oppressed with science as british asses wise and grave are now transformed to wild red lions as round our prey we ramp and rave thus by a swift metamorphosis wisdom turns wit and science joke nonsense is incense to our noses for when red lions speak they smoke hail nonsense dry nurse of red lions from thee the wise their wisdom learn from thee they cull those truths of science which into thee again they turn what combinations of ideas nonsense alone can wisely form what sage has half the power that she has to take the towers of truth by storm yield then ye rules of rigid reason dissolve thou too too solid sense melt into nonsense for a season then in some nobler form condense soon all too soon the chilly morning this flow of soul will crystallize then those who nonsense now are scorning may learn too late where wisdom lies footnote the red lions are a club formed by members of the british association to meet for relaxation after the graver labours of the day end of molecular evolution by james clark maxwell The Mathematician in Love by William J. McCorn Rankin. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A mathematician fell madly in love with a lady, young, handsome, and charming. By angles and ratios harmonic, he strove her curves and proportions all faultless to prove, as he scrawled hieroglyphics alarming he measured with care from the ends of a base the arcs which her features subtended then he framed transcendental equations to trace the flowing outlines of her figure and face and thought the result very splendid he studied since music has charms for the fair the theory of fiddles and whistles then composed by acoustic equations an air which when twas performed made the lady's long hair stand on end like a porcupine's bristles the lady loved dancing he therefore applied to the polka and waltz an equation but when to rotate on his axis he tried his centre of gravity swayed to one side and he fell by the earth's gravitation no doubts of the fate of his suit made him pause for he proved to his own satisfaction that the fair one returned his affection because as every one knows by mechanical laws reaction is equal to action let x denote beauty y manners well bred z fortune this last is essential let l stand for love our philosopher said then l is a function of x y and z of the kind which is known as potential now integrate l with respect to dt t standing for time and persuasion then between proper limits tis easy to see the definite integral marriage must be a very concise demonstration said he if the wandering course of the moon by algebra can be predicted the female affections must yield to it soon but the lady ran off with a dashing dragoon and left him amazed and afflicted 
equation referred to in stanza six l equals phi of x y z equals the triple integral over the fraction the numerator is f of x y z and the denominator is the square root of the difference of xi minus x squared plus the difference of eta minus y squared plus the difference of zeta minus z squared d xi d eta d zeta equation referred to in stanza seven integral from minus infinity to plus infinity over l d t equals m end of the mathematician in love by william j mccorn rankin The Three Foot Rule by William J. McCorn Rankin. A song about standards of measure. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. When I was bound apprentice and learned to use my hands, folk never talked of measures that came from foreign lands. Now I'm a British workman, too old to go to school so whether the chisel or file i hold i'll stick to my three-foot rule some talk of millimetres and some of kilograms and some of decilitres to measure beer and drams but i'm a british workman too old to go to school so by pounds i'll eat and by quarts i'll drink and i'll work by my three-foot rule a party of astronomers went measuring of the earth and forty million metres they took to be its girth five hundred million inches though go through from pole to pole so let's stick to inches feet and yards and the good old three-foot rule the great egyptian pyramids a thousand yards about and when the masons finished it they raised a joyful shout the chap that planned that building i'm bound he was no fool and now tis proof beyond a doubt he used a three-foot rule here's a health to every learned man that goes by common sense and would not plague the workman on any vain pretence but as for those philanthropists who'd send us back to school oh bless their eyes if ever they tries to put down the three-foot rule british association eighteen sixty four end of the three-foot rule by william j mccorn rankin to a missing member of a family group of terms in an algebraical formula by james joseph sylvester this librivox recording is in the public domain lone and discarded one divorced by fate far from thy wished-for fellows whither art flown where lingerest thou in thy bereaved estate like some lost star or buried meteor stone thou minds me much of that presumptuous one who loathes aught less than greatest to be great from heaven's immensity fell headlong down to live forlorn self-centred desolate or who new heraclid hard exile bore now buoyed by hope now stretched on rack of fear till throned astrea wafting to his ear words of dim portent through the atlantic roar bade him the sanctuary of the muse revere and strew with flame the dust of isis shore end of to a missing member of a family group of terms in an algebraical formula by james joseph sylvester the infant metaphysician by william j mccorn rankin this librivox recording is in the public domain a little boy went out one night the little boy went out 
the moon and stars were very bright as he ran round about and round and round and round about and round about ran he says he i'm running round about oh round about i be his head began to giddy get to giddy get began and giddier still and giddier yet as round about he ran and then he said unto himself unto himself says he is this myself that's round about and is it really me and then it grew so very dark so very dark grew it that though he often tried to see he could not see a bit and then he thought his eyes were out as out they seemed to be says he i think my eyes are out i think they are says he but his mamma came running out to look for little sam says she where are you sammykin says sammy here i am and when he saw his dear mamma who sammy came to find he knew by that as well he might he was not really blind and then he knew his eyes were in as in they well might be says he i think my eyes are in i think they are says he note this beautiful poem in which the most touching simplicity is mingled with the most profound knowledge of the human heart is as the reader we are sure will learn with tears of delight not altogether a vision of the illustrious author's benign imagination it is actually as we have been credibly informed an almost literal narrative of an incident of the childhood of the famous dr samuel johnson who wrote the big dictionary and rasselas End of the Infant Metaphysician by William J. McCorn Rankin End of a selection of 19th century scientific verse Read by Ruth Golding, 2015